Hello and welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. Today's webinar is about making reading epic with the Epic Reading app. And this presentation is based off of a, a training session I was going to do at the Winter Workshop. So if you'd like to find the presentation resources, you can go to bit.ly backslash make epic and you can have all the slides for from the presentation. So first of all, let's look at what is Epic? And Epic is an app that can help transform your reading classroom and give students choice in reading uh, in a digital format. So Epic is actually the number one children's ebook library and it gives unlimited access to students and teachers for free of over 25,000 high quality children's books. And those high quality children's books are ones that are recent titles. They're, um, they support AR and Lexile levels. Um, and there's all different kinds. You can have a book read to you. You can have videos. There's all different things inside this app as well. So I'm going to get out of the presentation and I'm going to jump into my teacher page. We're going to look at the teacher page first and then we'll jump into what the students would see. So your landing page on your teacher's page, first of all, I guess if you want to get to this app, if you go to www.getepic.com and sign in with your teacher email address, everything in this resource for you and your students in the school setting is free. If you wish for your child to utilize this at home, you can send a parent letter home. Um, however, there is a charge for the parents to use it at home for, for their students. But basically, when you get to the landing page, we'll talk a little bit more about this, this page later because it's what the students would see. But there's all different resources in here. I'm going to go to my teacher dashboard, and we're going to talk about... Um, what you'll see as a teacher and the feedback that you get from this app as a teacher. So basically you can set your students up with their own little profiles and you can upload your class via a uh, um, CSV file so it's very easy and once you upload them and then the student logs in they can select certain things from their profile again we'll talk a little bit more about that later um, you can set up different groups that you can access for your students um, under your profiles the activity is going to show you all of what your students have read based on the most recent to to the latest and so as you can see here um, one of my students read the I can smell book she read that book in one minute and she flipped 13 of the pages on this date now what's important about that is you can tell if the student actually spent time to read that book or if they were just flipping through the pages and not reading because it is time-based and you can actually go in and see how much was completed of the that book and it'll do that for every student and every book that they open. So as you can see on this one she pretty much just opened the first page and uh, closed the book and went to something different and so there is an evaluation process in here that you can see. So in this book um, she completed the book it took her six minutes and she flipped 41 pages. Now some of these books also have quizzes or you could um, put a quiz with them and um, you could see those results as well. So that is in the activity. This is where you can view your quizzes. And if you make a quiz for a book, you can review how the students did, how many students took it, um, and the percentage that they got from, from the book or from the quiz. Assignments is where you can set up a group of students and then um, get a collection of books. If you set up a collection of books um, and you can assign those to the students along with their quizzes. And um, so you can see I have assigned this living and non-living to two students and zero have completed it. Um, <clears throat> also up here at the top you can kind of have a quick evaluation of your class. So I actually have 37 kids low, low, um, loaded to my class. The seven books have been read, 1.1 hours of reading for the whole class, and there's been one video watched. Um, so that is from the teacher perspective. 
And, and under this, you, um, you can come in to search, and I'm going to show you a little bit more of that later, but you can search by, um, by topic level, you can come down here to search advanced and you can filter by AR or Lexile level. You can sort by age and you can sort by fiction or nonfiction. So I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna select AR level and then I'm gonna type in um, plants because we've been working on plants in science. And then you can kind of um, see Let me set the AR level again here. There we go. What the information that it gives you. So here it's telling you that there's a group of books called Plants Kindergarten Age Range is 6 to 8. There's one video and 41 books in that collection. And if I keep scrolling down, you can see that the age range changes. Um, and right next to that, you can actually click here and add it to a, a group or a, a favorites list. Um, you can select from collections, books, read to me books, videos, or audio books. So what's the difference between a read to me book and an audio book? A uh, read to me book is strictly where um, the book you can read along with the book and so if I click here and I click on one of those books it's it's gonna take me in and it'll read the words with me and as you notice it follows along or highlights the words as it reads it um, you can also click on a word and get the definition of in the pronunciation of the word right there. And that's just an example of an audiobook. Now, if I go, or excuse me, a read to me book, if I go to the audiobooks, this is more um, of um, digitally driven. So it'll just play the book and the kids listen. So when you open a book, you also get some information on that book too. So this is a seven minute um, audio book. The age level is four. This one does not have an AR level or a Lexile level listed. Um, and there's also a rating that comes out up here. And you could, this is where you as a teacher can create a quiz for this book or add it to a collection that you've already created. And these are some collections that I had created just to show you. So if I click add to a collection, I can say, okay, I want to add this to my kindergarten audiobooks, um, and then it puts it in that collection. Okay. So now I'm going to take you into what a student would see and how easy it is for a student to get into this reading app. Okay, now let's go in and look at Epic from a student perspective. What I like about this app is that you can actually have, uh, if you have a shared card of iPads, you can actually um, include more than one teacher account on the Epic app, and it makes it very easy. So as a student, I'm going to open the Epic app, and then if you have a shared card, like I said, you can have multiple teachers on here, but then they would just select their teacher, and then they'd go in and they see everybody in their class. And so they need to select their name, and I'm going to select a new one that I haven't opened here yet. And the first time that they open their app, they get to select different things that are, are interesting to them or of interest to them. And so then they select next. And then it takes them into their, um, basically their recommended profile based on the interest that they, that they chose. Now, if they ever want to change those interests, if they select my preferences, they can go back in and change um, their preferences right here as well. And so they can add different things in here as to um, what they're interested in. So once they do that, 
the recommended options are going to change based on their recommendations or their choices that they made. And so if I scroll through here, as a student, I see different recommendations of, um, here's some featured collections, and that's a group of books recommendations for that student at that level with those interests. They also have learning videos that are recommended for that level. Um, community collections are collections that are created by other teachers and shared. Uh, these read to me books are again the ones where you can click on them and it basically will um, play the book. Police car. Woo! Woo! And the students can follow along. Now, as you notice, students, as they read and open and complete books, they receive different badges. Um, so I'm going to go back up here to the top and I'm going to click on this drop down because there's different things that they could access here. So obviously, as I mentioned before, they have the recommended, but they could also sort by just learning videos. And teachers, I suggest that you um, check these learning videos out because if you're working on something specific, there is um, some really great learning videos in here that can go along with um, your topics or your curric curriculum areas. The collections are the collections that you can set up for your students or the collections are also ones that are related to the student interests and it will give them a whole group of books that are related to those interests. Popular books are the ones that receive high ratings from students in their interest levels, and so they can search through the most popular books. They can come down here and search by Read to Me Audio, and I showed you a little bit about what those were in the beginning. They can search by audiobooks, and it just pulls up just audiobooks for them. Um, quizzes are the quizzes that can go along with different books in different practices. So here's world quizzes, education quizzes in science and nature. So you can find those in there. Articles is a great resource as well because this can pull up articles that are related to, again, to their interests um, or uh, things that you're learning about in, in class. And so they can read those articles as well. Now, um, new to Epic is Epic loads new and up-to-date books all the time to their library. And so these are the new ones that they would load again that are related to the interest that they chose. Um, they can come over here to the left and search anything they want. And when they do that, it brings up different options of what they can search for. They can select search options and they can go here and say um, filter by AR level. And then they select their level that they read at. And then they can click search. And then they can type in a topic. And it will pull up those search parameters for the topic they chose. Um, so I'm going to go back to browse here. Now again, I mentioned as the students read, they earn badges. And so I'm going to show you just what a book would look like for a student. So they can open it up and they have all these options, it'll tell them that they have 26 pages to read or flip through. They can add it to their favorites. They can rate it after they're done reading. They can change the brightness. Um, they can also flip to read this offline if they go home and don't have access to it. But once they open the page, they get the title page, and then they get to flip through just like any ebook and read each page in the book. Now, when they get to the end, I love this about the Epic app because if they just keep flipping through those pages and they're not really reading it, the Epic app will say, you know, you didn't spend enough time reading the book. There's no way you could have finished the book in that amount of time. So please go back and read the book. It won't allow them to finish it. It also gives them a list of other books that they might like that are related to this. Um, but when they do click on finish the book, they give the opportunity are given the opportunity to rate the book. And if they take time to do that, um, they can also earn badges that way. But then all of this information is also um, recorded in your teacher dashboard. So that's where you see the results there. Now, if I click on a word that I'm in, uh, it will tell me the word. It will also give me definitions for the words right there as I'm reading. So if kids need help pronouncing words or even identifying words, it's right there for them as well. 
And again, they can add that to their favorites or whatever they want to do. Now, that was just a regular ebook. Again, if I go and I look for um, an audiobook or a read to me audiobook, it will filter. And I'm going to open one of those. It gives me the table of contents. Most raccoons have gray fur. Others. And as you can see, you can underline words, you can magnify um, however you prefer to read an ebook. And that is pretty much it from the student perspective. Okay, so thanks for listening to this webinar today. Um, and again, I want to remind you the presentation is available if you go back to that bit that bit.ly backslash make epic you can there's more information on there about what the teacher perspective looks like some different things that you can do um, with epic and how your students can access it and things like that and please don't forget to contact me me if you have any questions i'd love to help you out with getting this set up for your students you can reach me at tina.souser at esu8ne.org